Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and in this video I'll show you how to use my latest upload to the Reactor user library which is called Curveball and basically the idea is Curveball is a MIDI automation device so it takes incoming MIDI data, uh, MIDI notes and translates it into MIDI control data which can then be used to control um, knobs or other parameters in an external synth. So basically there are four nodes that respond to individual MIDI notes. And when I press play, you'll see uh, how they react when they get a MIDI note. And they each have a meter to the right that shows their current value that's being sent via MIDI. So I'll just show this on a simple little loop I made. And this is without uh, with massives set not to receive MIDI data right now. And when I change the monitor, you can hear the difference. All right, so I like doing stuff like this because it gives you some pretty dynamic sounding synthesizers and it also affords you to get some really strange effects that would otherwise be very difficult to get. Uh, so in Massive for example you can um, modulate reverbs and get some really strange FX type sounds that would be pretty difficult to get on your own um, and stuff like that. So controlling Curveball is fairly simple. Each node has four controls and they're all fairly easy to figure out what they do. Uh, so the start knob controls the start position and the end knob, as you may have guessed, controls the end position. We have a little XY module up at the top here that controls the shape of the curve. And finally, the time knob controls the speed of uh, that we're traveling from the starting point to the ending point. And the time is measured in seconds, so the higher the value, the longer it'll take to get from point A to point B. Alright, and of course we have the little meters on the right here that show us uh, exactly what value is being transmitted at any given point in time. So, let's take a moment to show you how to set this up with a synthesizer real quick. It's a fairly simple affair. So I'm just going to load Reactor into one channel and Massive into another. Um, I'm going to set the MIDI incoming on the Massive channel to come from Reactor in both drop-down menus. And we'll load up a copy of our ensemble. And um, Curveball responds to notes 48 through 51. These are really easy to change, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute in case you want to um, add extra nodes or just change which notes they respond to. So once we have our MIDI set up and Curveball loaded, um, all we have to do is right-click on a control in Massive and select the MIDI Learn option. And the next time incoming MIDI CC data arrives at Massive, um, that CC will be assigned to the given nub. Alright, so this is a fairly simple to use ensemble. Um, and I wanted to spend the rest of the time today talking about some ways that we can get a little bit more out of it. So first off, I'm going to show you how to change the MIDI notes and CC values that Curveball uses. Like I said, this is going to be really easy. So just hop into one of the macros that are named after a number, um, and we can edit the select gate. Uh, by simply typing in the note that we want into the note menu here. And then we do the same thing to the controller output at the end of the macro, and then simply change the name of the macro, and we're done. So this macro will now respond to note 60 and send out its data on MIDI CC60 as well. 
All right, so next up, I also designed this ensemble to be um, very easy to use in other projects. And it implements um, something called Bezier curves. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I've never actually heard someone else say the word. I've only seen it written down. But um, these curves are really easy to extract out of this project and use for another purpose. Um, so you can use the three-point Bezier macro, for instance, to shape the output of other functions or controls. Uh, so the easiest example would be using it to control the output of a knob. And so the reason why you would do that would be maybe to get a higher resolution uh, towards the uh, lower values of the knob if you set the curve up properly. Um, and that way it give you a little bit more control over certain values with the knob and a little less control over a different area that you might not be as interested um, having as precise. So that's a fairly common usage for Bezier curves. But you might notice that the macro in the upload is monophonic. So if you want to use a poly version of this, do not just set the entire macro to be polyphonic. If you do, you'll destroy the multi-display um, that is displaying the curve and giving you all of your visual feedback. So what you can do instead, um, set this back to mono, is hop inside the macro itself and select the top event core cell here and set that to be poly. This will destroy the meter and you won't be able to use it as a MIDI controller anymore but you will be able to use the um, Bezier curve as a polyphonic device, um, just in case you want to use it to control something else, like the shape of an LFO or whatever. One thing I want to mention while we're in here is that the input to this macro should be a value from 0 to 1. All right, and the last thing I wanted to talk about is how to set up the insides of this macro in case you want to create your own, own control system. Each of these um, core cells receives three sets of X and Y values. We have point zero X and Y, point one X and Y, and point two X and Y. And for each of the three core cells, these values should be identical. In order to set the values of any of the points, simply set the value using an order module and afterwards um, trigger this iterator here which will trigger the drawing of the multi-display and give you your visual feedback. All right, so once again, this is Salamander Anagram with reactortutorials.com. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, lately, I've been focusing a lot, as you can probably tell, on designing simple little um, instruments or uh, devices in Reactor and uploading them to the user library. Um, these are all things that are fairly simple, but they're a little more complicated than I can create in a 10-minute video. And um, sort of stuff I get a lot of requests for that I've just never been able to do so I've kind of changed the format instead of building stuff on screen all the time so if you guys have any um, things that you'd like to see me make uh, just let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do and hopefully I'll see you next week with a new reactor tutorial <laughs>